All right, so we're back with Mr. Kareem Biggs Burke, uh, co founder of Rockefeller Records and uh, founder of, what was it, Rock 96? Rock 96 and 4th of November. Yes, sir. All right, so <laughs> I got What's the intro. Up? What's up, man? What's going on? Man, it's a huge honor to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, thanks for being here. Uh, we appreciate it. This is Guru, man. Once again, I met you uh, at Fort Lauderdale. I actually got up in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> Everybody was like, who's that? I'm like, man, you guys are, you guys know I'm reading the Reasonable Doubt booklets when y'all bought them albums. Y'all know No, because you did it so abruptly. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he, we're in the middle of doing a show, and Guru just gets up as if there was a fire. And my whole thing was like, okay, you see a fire, like you ain't going to tell us. And so he told us after the fact, you know, like who you – because, you know, we're doing a show. I was in tunnel vision, so I didn't really see who was walking past. And once he told me, I was like, "Oh man!" And he was like, "I got his number." I was like, Phew. "Yeah." So, so we'll br- we'll brought you yeah. out to that sneaker con out there in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I was actually there for a champion meeting, and uh, uh, my man Manny wanted to um, bring me by, see what was going on over there. That was my first one, and I was um, I was amazed by it. Oh yeah, that's so. Cause you, that's like the that was like the sm- even though it was a nice turnout, that was the smallest turnout. So when you go to a New York, a Chicago, yeah. Cleveland, mm-hmm. even Cleveland, are, yeah. it's yeah. a huge turnout, like three, four Atlanta. people. Yeah. So, um, so for those who don't know, you want to introduce yourself as far as your influence in the culture of what you have done? Because I know who you are, but it kind of, it's for those people who don't know. Well, uh, you know, it's Kareem Biggs Burke, uh, co-founder of uh, Rockefeller Records, uh, with Jay-Z, Dame Dash, you know, we started Clothing Lines, Rockaware, you know, $700 million companies. We started a, a film division, launching Kevin Hart's career, uh, Lee Daniels' first director, uh, directorial debut. Uh, we sold Armadale Vodka. We started in tech, uh, sports division, mm. and, uh, you know, and also launched the likes of Kanye career as well, along with Cameron and BJ Clue and so on and so on. So... Uh, I, I like to be considered the co-founder of the culture. No, no, no doubt with a resume like that. Um, how was the sneaker culture coming out in Harlem? And I know you was a part of a group called The Best Out with you and Dame. Like, kind of, how was the sneaker yeah. culture? You guys coming up during that era? I mean, it was it was dope because um, everybody back then, you know, it was all about a fresh thing. Everybody wanted to stay fresh every day. And The Best Out, uh, all the guys, about four, thirteen, fourteen of us, it was everybody was real competitive. Mm-hmm. So everybody wanted to come out and be a little more flyer than the guy, uh, um, the other ones that was in the crew. Okay. Was it any, like, particular sneaker models that everybody was chasing yeah. back then? Or what? Um, let me see. Back then, we were wearing, uh, well, it was a few, right? I mean, we would wear sea lions sometimes. We would go um, with the tree toms. We would wear lottos. We would wear, um, obviously, Nike Airs, which was called Uptowns um, from Harlem, uh, Big Nikes. Uh, I said K-Swiss, um, Gear Dog, everything, man. I mean, we, we, you know, we ran the gambit. Right. We recently went to New York. Well, it wasn't recent. It was like, what, eight months ago? Mm. But, uh, yeah. you know, I I didn't have too much of a good time on New York. However, I will say this. Um, it seems like New York has a little bit of everything. Like, you know how, like, Detroit has its own style. Houston has its own style. It looks like New York is a blend of all those styles. You can get a little bit of everything out in New York. Yeah, and then Harlem was, you know, kind of known as that, that you know, the, the fashion capital for New York. So a lot of uh, trends and things like that started out of Harlem. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, a lot of people don't know this but, um, because, um, you know, with the Run DMC, they had the shell toes, even though it wasn't their shoe. They were kind of paid to endorse it or they kind of made it popular. Mm-hmm. And Adidas hopped on the yeah. end. With Jay being the first non-athlete to receive his own shoe, do you think Jay get enough credit for that? Um, probably not. And then you think about, um, you know, what we just did just now with, uh, with, with Emery, right? With mm-hmm. Vegas Jones. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking about a, a non-athlete, non-entertainer, nothing, you know, and he just had his own Puma. So I think we always trying to push the envelope, but what, what, what Jay did, I mean, was huge. Almost everything that we try to do was first, cause we like to open up the doors for others to follow. Right. I got a question for you. Cause we just had, um, Mr. Dwayne Edwards, he used to be the senior design director for Jordan Brand. And he was just saying, because, you know, now you have a bunch of non-athletes uh, as endorsers for different brands. And he was saying the difference between back in the day as opposed to now is that more people are aware that they are a brand. And it seems like Jay, going back to Guru's point, was like the first one to realize that he was a brand. And I think mm-hmm. that's 
kind of what accelerated him into the stratosphere or the level that he's on right now. Do you agree with that? Like people are more aware now that there are brands as opposed to back in the day. Well, yeah, and I, you know, to to take it back, the genesis of that, I would say, what we built. So, I mean, we're talking about best out days, right? Uh, and right. that's you know, eighty eighty eight when in eighty nine when we we talked about coming together as a crew, and we seen the influence that we had not only in Harlem throwing these parties, but all around New York City, and we took that concept and 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 turned that into Rockefeller. So, with Rockefeller, it was about you know building a brand that. Um, that suppressed the culture where, where we were just living. You know, we, we, you know, we, Jay talks about in songs that we didn't cross over to pop culture. We brought pop culture to where we live. Mm -hmm. So it, it was all about uh, building that brand, um, brand, brand awareness, and then doing it in different, um, different segments of the culture. That's why we touch fashion, films, spirits, tech, sports, uh, you know, and, of course, the music. So, you know, it's, it's just a blueprint that was laid and, um, you know, Jay took that and then, you know, did his own um, S.I. Carter with it. And then kids and um, a lot of people are still doing that today. Right. Cool, cool. Um, well, as far as that S.I. Carter deal, was all of you gentlemen involved in that? Or how did that come about? Or was that just him? Or I heard rumblings that Steve Stout helped with that as well. Uh, he may have. I'm not sure. The, um, the S.I. Carter came about. Uh, Jay wanted, to, you know. It was his name, so obviously, you know, that was something he wanted to do. We still had Rockaway and Rockefeller at the time, but, you know, we all did a lot together, and we had businesses that were separate, mm -hmm. but we supported each other um, as a whole in whatever we were doing at that time. If you could go back to, like, because I've always been intrigued about Rockefeller, because, like, it seemed like everybody's tried to start their own label at one point in time, but you guys seem to be, like, the most successful at it. You kind of seem like the... the uh, I guess the example for other people, like everybody aims to be a Jay-Z. Like it seems like you guys had a team in place, you know, but that's just my opinion of it. Um, can you kind of yeah. give us more detail on how it, like you actually formed and got started and how it was that you guys were able to work together? Um, were you, did you have roles that you each had? Uh, well, for, for the music, yeah, but it's the um, unsung heroes that people don't really hear about who contributed, um, you know, like Tata. Uh, B High, you know, uh, Jay's cousin, and, um, you know, like Ty Ty's co founder of Rock Nation right now, Emery, and what he did early on, uh, you know, guys from Harlem like Rel, uh, you know, uh, my brother, uh, Bob, um, God bless the dead. So it, it was a lifestyle, and Big Ty, excuse me, it was a lifestyle and a movement is what made uh, Rockefeller so attractive because we were doing those things that Jay talked about before the music. It just so happened that he was able to paint a picture with it through sound and gave people, you know, a chance that they could close their eyes and then dream and then, um, you know, and be exactly where we were. So we was living a certain lifestyle before the music, and it was just um, was able to put on a platform that was able to uh, start other businesses. That's why Reasonable Doubt is so important to us because that was the thing. That was the, uh, the, the first, uh, you know, uh, music album but not only that we knew that that was going to be the platform that we was going to springboard into all these different businesses okay cool kind of transitioning into that um what kind of made you st well how did you start fourth of november i know you started with another gentleman and then from that what made you kind of go back in time and do the rock 96 collection well it was um you know thinking about the 20th year anniversary and what that meant to me so a lot of, uh, you know, all these years you guys heard from Dame and Jay and heard their point of view. But I wanted to do something a little different and give back to the fans in a way that um, I can put my creative spin on. So I, I talked to Emery about it, and, you know, we decided that we would executive produce this collection where we would take the lyrics and then create graphics around it. So once we did that, you know, a lot of people were selling merch at the time. Mm -hmm. Um but no one was doing it and giving an experience. Mm -hmm. So we did something in L.A., you know, which was, which was cool and small. <clears throat> but when we, when we came to New York and we was able to uh, have access to d and Studio, the actual board that we recorded the album on, that Premier probably recorded half of his life on, you know, Nas, Biggie, um, every artist you could think of recorded on his board, and we brought that in the space. 
and then played some um, unheard uh, Jay-Z songs from when he was 16 years old, it gave a different experience, and people gravitated towards that. And it brought me back, you know, to, you know, the beginning, right? So everything we did is a lifestyle and a movement and pushing the envelope instead of just having a pop-up where, you know, people just come in, grab a couple shirts, with a, you know, one or two graphics that didn't really have any meaning and just the name of an album, I wanted to do something different and, um, t- you know, touch on people's favorite lyrics and then bring that to life. So as that started to grow, uh, I seen that there was a void there, and that's where Rock 96 um, started. So it's so funny. So now there's Rock 96 and Reasonable Doubt, two divisions kind of un- under the same umbrella, and Rock 96 is going into Barney's. So I have a collection Damn. going in the Barney's um, on May 1st, and it'll be in there 30 days. We're going to have every Barney's window from here to California, um, all across the country. And then I'm also doing a, a pop-up shop in Revolve in L.A. So now the top 300 stores around the world are calling for Rock 96. So I partner with a guy, um, uh, Blaine, who, who has a, a, a brand called Made Warren, and all the clothes are being handmade. Um, in California, and I'm um, going into shops um, coming soon. And that's what's up. Um, it's, first of all, it's just good to see a brother, an African American, have that type of impact. Um, and talking mm-hmm. about impact, um, going back to somebody that you probably know well, well off, um, Kanye. What are your thoughts about mm-hmm. his effect? Not even just on music, but like on the sneakers. Like, I mean, did you mm-hmm. see that? For did you see that when you first met him? Did you think, okay, this dude is going to be huge? I mean, yes, I did. But everybody that we had on Rockefeller, we was breeding entrepreneurs. You got Beanie Siegel, who's had two gold albums, had uh, two movies, a clothing line, three Bentleys, right? You had Cameron, uh, 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 who had uh, Dipset. He had his own label, had five artists under him. You know what I'm saying? So all of these, all these things was movements. Like we was, you know, and Cameron still going today. You see him. He just had his own sneaker with Reebok. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we've seen it in Kanye. We've seen it in all of our artists. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I knew Kanye was going to be a, 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 force, a, a force to be reckoned with. I seen a genius in it. And um, at that time, uh, Dame was actually at Rockaway while Jay was actually working on that S-Star Carter stuff. And I kind of took the helms over at Rockefeller Records, and I actually uh, personally uh, launched Kanye West's uh, career with, with that first album, right? College Dropout. But like with the sneakers, though, like I mean, did you? I mean, have... he was a fashion. Yeah, he was. A, yeah, I, it, not, none of that surprises me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I did something called the family tree, and if you look down that tree, everybody right now that's relevant somehow came from Rockefeller. Right. So. It's it's this it's like, that's what I'm saying. That's why reasonable doubt is so important because you got to talk about the genesis. Right. But yes, I did know Kanye was going to do that. No, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, I, I knew he was going to be that big, or you know, I thought he was going to be the the best ever, and he's still on that um, on that path. But am I surprised? No. And am I? Um, do I see what he's doing in the marketplace? Of course I do, and I'm super happy for him. I mean, you got people saying that he jumped over the jump man and believing it. That's crazy. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a funny st- rock. Of, always, everybody wanted to know the like the backdrops, the funny rock of, uh, the Rockefeller stories. Like I listened to the uh, Rat Radar podcast with uh, Elliot and uh, B Dot, and was it true that Kanye was like, "Yo, I'm spending my money too f- fast. Can you teach me how to save a million dollars?" Yeah, yeah. Kanye would always tell me that. <laughs> yeah, he would talk, he would he would call me all the time and be like, "Yo, big." You know, how do I keep a million? You know, I keep, I, you know, I've made it before, but I keep spending my money. And I would talk to them about fiscal responsibility and things like that. It's funny because the last time I seen him, the first thing, you know, and, and it's been some, quite some time, you know, uh, you know, before that we haven't seen each other. And the first thing he said is, look, I know you're doing 4th of November. I want to support you with that. So that meant, that, you know, that, that really meant a lot to me. That's that's super dope. Like, what what other stories do we not know? Like what other funny stories behind the scenes, or even with like yeah, just even, or even, even funny, with just... yeah, funny or even whether it be music or sneakers. Somebody had their sneakers stolen, or somebody stepped on dang sneakers and he clowned them. Like <laughs> I can see that happen too. <laughs> yeah, so no, nah, I, I I don't know. It's just funny because like at that time, you know, sneaker shopping 
uh, the you know probably like three years straight, we was just on straight Nike Nike Airs, right? Mm-hmm. And we would all buy uh, probably about a hundred pair at a time because we 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 may have went maybe five or six years without wearing the same sneaker twice. Mm-hmm. So if, if there was a if there was a scuff mark on anybody's sneaker, you know they'd definitely get clowned for that. But I remember also going to. Uh, our first time in Japan when Nico gave us uh, some of the first uh, uh, vapes that came out. Mm-hmm. So he gave us all, like, the first prototypes of that, too, man. I think I still got some of those. Cool. Uh, going on to those samples, do you still have those Rockefeller Air Force Ones, the Black Albums, the the ones Jay was yeah. wearing out of the steps in the uh, Bonnie and Clyde video and the Shell Toes? Yeah. Like, how did that yeah, work? I got the, sh- the Shell Toes. I got the Black Album and the Blueprint. The Blueprint Air Force Ones? Blueprint, yeah, we had the blueprint with the clear blue bottoms. And it said the blueprint right <laughs> that's, oh. that's uh, that's how did that? How did Nike team up with you guys? They kind of pull that off. Oh, uh, that was just them reaching out to marketing and doing some, you know, doing something limited. Uh, but you know, when you're in the mix, all that stuff, you know, kind of comes easy. You don't really got to go out; they come knocking on the door. Hey, nice. you know, Guru had mentioned something. By the way, this is Caesar. Uh, Guru had mentioned earlier about Jay not getting enough credit for being one of the first non-athletes to have his own sneaker deal. But what he also doesn't get enough credit for is kind of making the whole retro thing hot. Like because at the time it wasn't nobody. Everybody wasn't going after the retros that hard. Like you would see Jay Z do a performance and he wearing like the Olympic sevens and they hadn't released uh, yet yeah. and whatnot. Do you think uh, that Jay Z gets enough credit and that? Him and along with people like Fat Joe helped uh, build that whole retro thing, that fad? Um, for me, asking me, do I think JC gets enough credit? Of course he do. I mean, we, almost, <laughs> <laughs> we probably, you know what I'm saying? We probably created every trend over the last 15, um, 20 years. You, you, you know what I'm saying? When he's, anytime Jay says something in a song, people automatically gravitate to that and switch exactly what they're doing. And, and and knows that okay, whatever he's saying, this is what we need to be doing. That's crazy. So, I'll, I'll go ahead. I mean, you don't get you don't hip hop. Usually, an artist's lifespan is three albums. I mm-hmm. mean, for Jay to be going twenty, be in a Hall of Fame for a guy. First of all, he don't write. He's in a songwriter's Hall of Fame, the first hip hop uh, artist ever, and then to have uh, the most number one albums ever in music history, three ahead of Elvis Presley. I mean, you know. Yeah, he gets enough credit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. Um, qu- quick question. Um, also, too, I heard, you know, going back to some of those Rap Jeans interviews or something, uh, when you guys were shooting a Dead President's video and you had the Monopoly yeah. scene and then, I guess, Jay or you or Dame summoned for the money and, like, you guys were playing Monopoly with real money and Biggie, you had Biggie shocked? Yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah, that line. Biggie, yeah, his, well, yeah, no, his eyes pop out his head. He's seeing that because we took – you know, we didn't tell him that. So we had, um, I don't know, probably like a little over, uh, you know, two, 300000 in cash, and we put it on the mm-hmm. table. And he was just looking like, what the hell is going on? You know, we didn't drop an album yet or nothing. You know, we were just shooting our second uh, video. But Biggie, that night, um, him and Dame had a, a, a drink off, and they were going shot for shot with Chris <laughs> Style. So if you look at that video and all those empty bottles, a lot of that was uh, Jay and Biggie going back and forth. Who won and that? That uh, that time, Biggie, and then Dame won the the, the, the next one, and that's where when he like uh, when Biggie had that line of uh, something about the uh, mink, the throw of something coochie mink. Dame, no, Dame mink stinks. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah, because he, he he threw up on a mink that night. Wow. So Dame caught him at, at the at the club uh, at the Carbon um, the next time. Hey, how cool! It was, that, it, it, it was at that video that Biggie um, said that he would jump on a J song, and that's how Brooklyn Finest came about. But first, that song was hot. Um, but how cool was Big man? Because I just feel like when he left, man, I left a huge hole in like a lot of people's hearts, man. Like he just seemed like yeah. the type of dude that everybody just gravitated to. Yeah, I mean, Biggie was you know he was a type A. He was real charismatic, and that humor that you hear in the song. It really came across when he was around. I mean, a lot of people don't know Big was like a comedian. Like, if you're around him, yeah, you're gonna laugh all day. You Even know what I mean? Uh, so him and his I'm, him I'm, and his crew would just make jokes about each other all day, and we used to do that too. So that 
that was something that we really bonded over. The first day that we did uh, Brooklyn Finals, we actually went to a Bernie Mac show right after at the Beacon Theater. Wow. Go ahead, MJ. You had a question? No, I was just going to say you can tell um, from in the song Biggie had, um, I got a story to tell. Oh, man, yeah. That's probably the best. <laughs> He's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, also, too, I had... Big, big was a hey, quick question. I mean, to cut you off. Did he actually... Because the rumor was, like, Biggie never wrote anything. Now, he just went into the booth and just, like, off the top of the head, laid down his lyrics. Yeah, him and Jake, neither one of them wrote. So, even, like, when we did Brooklyn Finest, uh engineer threw a pad in the middle of the table, and then Jay pushed it back to Big, and Big pushed it back to him, and then that's when they found out they <laughs> neither one of them wrote. Man, and I heard Jay got the best. I heard Jay finished his songs the next day, and Big had to come no, back. No, not that, not the next that day. Like Jay finishing probably like fifteen minutes. Man. And Big had to come back. I heard Big so, was mad. Yeah, well, Big had to come back a couple times. I wouldn't say that Jay got the best of them. If you hear the song, I mean, they both right there matching wits with each other. You know mm. what I mean, it's, they always brought the best out of each other. Wow. So and then that's when that's when uh, after that I love the dough came about because I heard Big said uh, after this I'm picking the yeah. uh, I'm picking the song from yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, he said I'm gonna pick a regular beat because Big then you know the way Brooklyn Finance was you had to rap on an off bar and Biggie didn't really know how to count bars then so Jay was telling them how to you know showing them how to count the bars. I got a quick question. Well, two quick questions for you. One, like Jay Z is seen as the Michael Jordan of rap, right? Do you foresee mm-hmm. a LeBron James of rap ever coming to usurp his place? Um, it's hard to say right now, man, because it's been so long. I've never seen somebody just really last this long and be so consistent. Um, uh, you know, Drake right now, you know, he, he's having a good run. How long it's going to last, I don't know. But, um, you know, me right now, as far as hip-hop's concerned, I'm, I'm really uh, – you know, a Kendrick Lamar fan. That's I really, right. I really yeah. like That's Kendrick. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's all, yeah. Most I, definitely. You don't have to answer this question, but I got to ask it since I probably never have a chance to talk to you ever again. <laughs> um, I got to ask this question. Like, <laughs> Jay-Z, like, because, you know, at one point in time, he signed Nas, right, mm. to the label. How fulfilling was that yep. to Jay? That was on Def Jam. Was, oh, that was on Def Jam. Okay, yeah, I thought he signed up to his label. I was about to say, like, Jay had to be feeling yeah. something. Here's, here's, can you tell Caesar, man? You guys will probably in there or heard it. The We have this discussion all the time. The bar for the, the verses on Renegade, right? I feel like yeah. I like Jay's better because Jay kind of spoke for the black community as in, you know, M killed it too. I think, I told you it was a tie. I think Jay, the first... The first go round, Jay got him. Then on the back end, towards the end of the song, M came back. Okay, who who can I can oh because he just let, let, he no, was he here. Let context me. to your point. My whole point was like I like both too. I just felt like, and they both kept it real, but real is subjective to the person. Like you know what I'm saying. Like if you a judge, you're gonna talk about law and all that other stuff. If you from the streets, you're gonna talk streets. M is not from the streets, so he talked about real stuff according to him. They both came from a real place. I just think yeah. lyrically, M killed it on there, and him from being from Detroit, you know, what I'm saying he gets a little edge to that too. That was just my whole point of view. Like, well, so. you want to go ahead, going to pick your winner, and then kind of tell how when your reaction when you first heard that song. Well, when I first, I mean, M sent the beat to us, mm-hmm. so Jay finished actually finished that in maybe shit. I want to say in like less than an hour, <laughs> and sent it back. So M was just bugging like, "Yo, what do you mean you're finished?" <laughs> he's, like, yeah, he's, like, I just, he's like, I just sent you the beat. He was like, yeah, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? So we weren't together um, when it was done. So Jay did that and sent it back. But um, when I heard the complete song, I mean, we were just happy, you know. Jim and Eminem being a force at that time, and we know what Jay was. Uh, we just thought it was a great collaboration. Yeah, it was. That, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was a hard so like that. that was a sleeper, too, because I remember on the album, you know, you heard the songs on the radio, and then you go through the whole album, you come across that song, it was like, whoa, <laughs> wait. Yeah, so that was also, too, another funny uh, Money Saving story. I heard you kind of prophesized that recession and told, you know, I saw the Breakfast Club interview with Jim. And he said, uh, he told Jim to save his yeah. money. He was like, man, I'm going to the strip club right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I was able, I was always able to see a few things, um, you know, be a, a little bit ahead of time, luckily. But, yeah, I used to, I used to talk to him about that because I used to see how he was spending and tell him, like, look, 
lot of things is about to happen. Just trust me. Just hold your money right now. And then uh, I was like a year later, he was like, Biggs, I lost my shirt. He lost money in Merrill Lynch and all this stuff, man. And, yeah, he he, he took a little hit. Oh, that's cool, cool. Um, before we let you go, you want to talk about uh, what you got uh, with the Rock 96 and what you got uh, coming in the near future, maybe a sneaker collab in the making or something? Yeah, we're talking to a few people right now. Um, you know, uh, like I said, Emery, that's my partner, uh, Vegas, he just had the Puma collab. Uh but we're, we're talking with a few people right now. I don't want to let the, um, you know, let anything out the bag. But uh, I mean, we have a few things coming um, down the pipeline. We got a new company called Gravity, which is the center of all things. And under that, it's almost, you know, replicating what we did before. There's a film division. Uh, there's obviously an apparel division uh, with Fourth uh, of November. Uh, the denim line that's doing really well too. Um, if you guys don't know anything about that, go to the IG Fourth of November at Fourth of November spelled out, and at the Rock ninety six you'll see you know all the new things that's um, that's happening. But um, uh, also you know we, we, we're talking a couple of spirit companies too. There may be a beer in the mix. There's a there's a there's a few things that we're doing right now, and also um, we may be getting into tech as well. So uh, starting a, um, a little incubator um, that we are able to um, work with some other brands and accelerate um, what they're doing too, and uh, you know start with some innovation and some new products. Hey, will we will we run into you at another sneaker con in the future? Uh, yeah, if I um, you might see my name on a building too. Oh wow, dang. <laughs> Yeah, that up. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. You know, we always keep in contact. Okay. I thank you for like calling to check on me oh. and just the advice you give. Yeah. It's price, especially you know my friend Julian here. We was been Farmer Jack in the bottom room arguing over Dipset mixtapes and Rockefeller songs. So right. it's been a privilege yeah, and yeah. honor to interview you. Hey, real quick, okay. is Jay done? Yeah. Is there another? Will we see another album from Jay at all ever? Uh, I, I, I don't want to say right now, but okay. um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks All right. you so much. Okay, man. All right. All right. So once again, that was Kareem Biggs Burke, co-founder of Rockefeller Records and founder of Rock ninety six Clothing yeah. and Fourth of November. Yes, sir. So we're gonna take a short break and be right back. <laughs> 